All right, today we're going to be talking about 6.05 conversion between rectangular and polar coordinates. So we're just going to kind of be going back and forth, all right? You're going to see a lot of uh, similarity from when we go from um, a rectangular to polar. So again, we've talked about polar coordinates. They're in the form of r theta, okay? And then rectangular coordinates are in the form which we've always dealt with x comma y, okay? And so to find our rectangular uh, coordinates, all we're going to do is x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta, okay? So the first thing we always want to do is if we have it in radians so we can keep our calculator in degrees, we're going to change that pi over 6. So that pi over 6 is now 4, 30 degrees. <clears throat> so let's go ahead now and let's find our x and y coordinates. So it's going to look like this. So it's going to be... Uh, 4 because that's r, 4 cosine, 30 degrees, and then the y value is going to be 4 sine 30 degrees. Again, this looks very familiar from vectors, right, when we were given the magnitude and the direction and we were asked to find the components. So I'm just going to type that in 4 cosine, make sure your calculator is in degrees. Sorry, what I mean by that is this mode, degrees should be highlighted, okay. I'll show you one real quick on the calculator here. And then the other two I'm not going to. So 4 cosine 30 degrees. That gives me 2 root 3. Guys, I want the exact, by the way, too. Okay, so leave it as 2 root 3. I don't need a decimal there. I'll let you know if I do 4 sine 30. And that's 2. So it's going to be 2 root 3, comma 2 is the point. Okay. All right, next one here, negative 2, 135. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be negative 2 cosine 135, and then negative 2 sine 135. And so when I plug that into my calculator there, so negative 2 cosine 135, I get root 2. And then sine of 135, well, negative 2, sorry, sine of 135. I do that, I get negative root 2. Which, again, like, look at your angle measure. That angle measure is in quadrant 2, so that my rectangular coordinates should have a positive x, negative y, and I do. Just like up here, 30 degrees, that's quadrant 1, x and y are positive, their point is positive, okay? All right, now with a negative 120, nothing changes here, okay? Same sub of the form. This is going to be negative 6 cosine, and then in parentheses put a negative 120 in there, comma, negative 6 sine, in parentheses a negative 120. I'll show you what that looks like in the calculator, okay? So it's going to look like this. So you're going to go negative 6 cosine, just make that negative 120 in there like that, hit enter, and you get 3. And then you go negative 6 sine. And then you get 3 root 3. Sorry, one second. I might have done something wrong here. Yep. <clears throat> and there you go. So 3 root 3, comma 3 root 3. Remember, again, negative 120, what happens? We go clockwise, and then the negative sign goes back up, so it puts us in quadrant 1, so that makes sense. Okay, I was just making sure I was doing that correctly. Sorry, guys. Okay? All right, now here's where it takes a little bit more time to do rectangular, but not bad, because it should be very familiar with vectors, okay? So rectangular coordinates are x, comma, y to go to polar, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and then tan inverse of y over x, okay? So not only does it want us to find a polar coordinate here, it then wants us to do the multiple representations, okay? So then we will do that as well, okay? So first off, let's go ahead and let's find our, our polar coordinate to do the multiple representations with. 
So to find r, we're just doing the square root of x squared plus y squared, right? So it's going to be 1 squared plus negative root 3 to the second power. And so when I do that, and I'll just go ahead and plug that into my calculator just to make sure. Square root 1 squared plus a negative root 3 squared hit enter. And so you get 2. Okay? So r is equal to 2. And theta is then going to be tan inverse of the y value over the x value. So negative root 3 over 1. Let's go ahead and plug that into our calculator. Double tap tan. Negative root 3 over 1. Close parentheses. Hit enter, and there we go. So we get negative 60. Okay. Now, the thing you have to ask yourself is this, though, right? Okay. Negative 60. Where are we supposed to be? Okay, this is in quadrant 4, right? It's in quadrant 4. Well, yes, tangent works, and we can do negative 60, but, again, we're trying to find a, we want a, we want a positive angle. We want a positive angle just for this. I know this isn't a word problem, but I want you to approach the same thing we did with vectors, right? And so, how do I get this angle to be in quadrant 4? Well, I add 360 to it. And so then your first point is 2, 300. And now it wants us to do the multiple representations. Okay, the multiple representations. So recall then for our next point, since R is staying the same, we're going to take that 300 and we're going to subtract 360. And so when I do that, I'm going to get 2, comma, negative 60. Okay. Now that we're changing R, now we're changing R, okay, we can go from the original. We know that we need a positive theta and also a negative theta, okay? So um, to, get, to keep that positive theta, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that 300 degrees, I'm going to subtract 180. Because if we subtract 180, we know it's going to keep it positive. So you're doing that 300 degrees there minus 180. And so when you do that, you're going to get negative 2, 120. Okay? And then to get to our last point, we always just take the point that we started with the negative r, that 120 from before, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to subtract 360 because they're coterminal. Okay, so again, how did I get 2 comma 300 right here? I found r using our formula. I found theta doing tan inverse, adding 360 degrees. So some people will not do that, and they'll just go, okay, here's our multiple representations, which, again, I did get 2 negative 60, right? So technically, it does work, but I don't think it works every time like that. So ideally, I would do this process. Figure out, okay, what quadrant am I supposed to in? Quadrant 4, add 360, and then we'll go about it that way. Okay. Again, the first point you're always subtracting 360 from because they're coterminal. That second point, you take your original angle and you're either going to subtract 180 or add 180. Okay, we wanted a positive angle here, so we subtracted 180 and we got negative 2, 120. And then on this last point, you always take the angle from the second point you found and you're subtracting or adding 360. This time I subtracted 360 because I needed a negative theta. Okay. All right, let's go ahead here and let's look at number two real quick. This is our last one. Again, let's go ahead and find r. So r is the square root of negative 3 squared plus 6 squared. And so when you do that, it's going to give you 9 plus 36, which is the square root of 45, which then equals 3 root 5. Okay, so we'll keep it like that. I want 3 root 5, one exact. Theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x is 6 over negative 3. So let's go ahead. We're in quadrant 2 there, so we're obviously going to have to do something with our angle here. 
6 over negative 3. Enter. Okay, I got negative 63.4. We're going to round that to the tenth, so negative 63.4 degrees. Which again, what quadrant am I in here? I'm in quadrant 2 based on the point, right? Negative x, positive y. That's how you determine. How do we get to quadrant 2? We add 180. And so when I do that, what am I going to get? I got negative 63, not 36, sorry guys. 63.4 plus 180. And so that's going to give me now 116.6 degrees. And that's going to be our first point that we're doing multiple representations. Of. Sorry, let me put a line here so I don't confuse you guys. So we're going to have 3 root 5 and then 116.6. So recall, whenever we go to this next point here, because the R is staying the same, the angles are coterminal. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 116.6, I'm going to subtract 360, because I know I need a negative theta there. Okay? So 116.6 minus 360, and that's going to give me 3 root 5, and then negative 243.4. Now for this next one here, okay, this next point here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the R to negative. And remember, we change the R to negative. We take the original angle and we either add or subtract 180. Okay. Um, this time, I'll go ahead and I'll subtract 180 and that will give me my negative R negative theta, so 116. 0.6 minus 180. And so when I do that, that's going to give me now 116.6 minus 180. Give me a negative 63.4, which again, you guys are like, wait, we got that at the beginning here. Why'd you add 180? Well, again, look it. If I wouldn't have added 180, you would assume that that was a positive R negative 63.4, but the negative 63.4 actually goes with the negative R, okay? And so, um, on the problem above, I'm assuming because tangent does work in quadrant 4, that's why it still does that, okay? But don't assume that, and so that's why you want to go ahead and find the actual positive angle every time here, okay? And so then for our last point, we're taking our negative 63.4, since the R is staying the same, and we are going to go ahead and we're going to add... 360 to it because they're coterminal and so that gives me a negative 3 root 5 and then a negative 63.4 plus 360 will give you 296.6 and there you go okay All right, so a little bit more on the second part there, but not, not too bad. We'll practice that a lot. Okay, but you should be ready to go for the quiz. All right, guys, so I'll see you tomorrow in class. Talk to you then. Peace.